Welcome. Wow, this thing's on. Welcome to another uh, free barn tech talk. Uh, we're trying to do these on uh, basically monthly basis, but uh, next month we're going to have two of them. Uh, we've got one coming up on satellite security and another on a homegrown uh, 3D printer that we made here at Barn. Uh, today's tech talk is by Mark McComsey on advances, recent advances in drone technology. And um, we're hoping Mark's going to follow this up with a class. So if you're interested uh, in a class after the talk, let me or Mark know. Okay, Mark, Great. yours. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Mark, and uh, I've been doing first-person drones for, I guess, going on five years now. Um, I will tell you that the, uh, you know, once you fly a first person drone where you're wearing the goggles, it's, it's really hard to go back. I mean, there's the majority of drones sold, I think, are what we call camera drones, and they're basically a flying tripod for taking video. You look at your phone screen or some of the fancier ones, like the bigger DJIs might have, you can buy a optional screen and controller to fly, but it, the experience is really just like, um, I mean, you're just looking at a movie on your, on your, on your, you know, cell phone. Um, once you wear the goggles, it's the closest thing to, you know, really being a pilot. I mean, you're, you're right there. Um, it's, it's, you can do things that you could never do with a camera drone in terms of the control, the acrobatics and everything. Um, you know, it's, it's not uncommon for, um, you know, what we call first-person view drones to be capable of some pretty crazy speeds and, and, and things you could just never do flying looking at a little tiny phone screen. So um, I've covered that in the past, and I've taught classes here where we've built, uh, you know, a 5-inch or a 7-inch, uh, you know, traditional first-person drone from scratch. And one of the things I've struggled with is, you know, it, there's just a learning curve, and it's serious. I mean, you've got to learn how to solder. You've got to learn how to program these things. And then you've got to learn how to fly them. And that's not an easy feat for, for most people. Um, we typically tell people do 10, 20 hours or more on a simulator before you even think about flying your drone, because you're probably going to crash it in about 30 seconds otherwise. And uh, it's... It's a lot of fun, but it's a, it's a formidable hobby. And uh, over the last year and a half or so, we've, we went into digital uh, goggles from the traditional analog. And it, the difference was really going from you know, VG, uh, VHS to DVD or, you know, in terms of the quality level. Um, and DJI has really led the way with their, uh, their first-person goggles. Um, at the end of last year, they came out with what's called Goggles 2, which is a, a, a significant upgrade in terms of resolution. It's not perfect, I mean, the, but it's, it was, it's, a, it's a big difference. Uh, it's also a lot more compact form factor. And they, they brought those goggles out with this little funny-looking drone called the Avada. And I frankly bought the kit only for the goggles. My intention was to just to, you know, part out the, the rest of the kit, which is the batteries and the controller and everything, and just keep the goggles, because the new cameras coming out would use the, the new goggles. But I found myself enjoying flying it so much, and after having a couple of people, my daughter and a couple of friends, I had them flying first person in five minutes. I mean, that was unimaginable for this hobby before then. And um, they have two different controllers, which we'll get into, and some other things. But it really is a bridge. Uh, I will tell you up front, my goal is to convert most people that are, are passionate about this hobby into ultimately building their own traditional first-person drones, because it, it's, such a, it, it's such a big difference between this little guy. But nevertheless, it's the closest thing to being able to just cheat and be able to fly this way that you'll ever see that you know I've, I've come across. Um, simple terms, first person means first person view. 
the, the drone has a camera that broadcasts the live footage right back to the pilot on the ground, and they're wearing goggles versus looking at your phone screen. Um, that is everything in terms of the difference. Um, if you want to, if you want to have, you know, see what's on your roof or something, and you don't care that you can barely see the little phone screen, but it's good enough to fly around, it'll do the job. And if you want to shoot cinematic video or, that, or real estate footage and stuff, the traditional drones like the DJI Mini 3 or you know Mavics, they're going to give you better footage. Uh, it, the, the flight experience is what first person view is, first and foremost. And ultimately, if you invest the time and effort, in, you can get shots you can't get any other way because of the degree of control because you're, you're literally in the captain's seat flying. Um, you know, this is an example of GPS drone. They, you know, whether it's a phone strapped to the controller or a little tiny screen, that's what you, that's all you can see. And uh, you know, it's it's really not immersive. It's just there for basic navigation. Um, who here has a drone right now, like a like this this style? And uh, who has? Uh, does anyone have a first person drone right now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine how big of a difference. I've had people get motion sick or stare the heck out of themselves. The first time I flew my drone, I popped it up over my house about, and all of a sudden I was like at 60 feet up before I knew it, because these things can fly really fast. And it freaked me out looking down at the roof, and I promptly crashed it on the roof of my house. I mean, it's, it's, you need to do the work on a simulation with a traditional drone. Um, um, yeah, these are the new goggles. They're a lot smaller, more compact, uh, just to show you. I, I went to Arizona, and I took this little Avada kit with a couple of batteries, and it, it was a lot smaller to travel with, which was nice. It's not as good as like a mini, a DJI mini, which like is like a transformer. It folds into itself and everything, but on the other hand, it's not giving you the experience and the ability to fly it. Um, I'm going to show you guys, I flew around my yard through the woods, through pockets or holes that were barely bigger than the drone in a shaded forest area, and I had no issues flying all through there. I mean, you could literally explore every single room of the barn, including the closets with this drone, uh, very easily, w you know, with, with just a relatively limited amount of flight experience. Yeah, it's like, uh, I think, 28, 30 uh, milliseconds. It's, it's, it's almost non-existent. You really don't perceive it, um, which is another nice thing about it. And uh, I'm going to see if this will work. Uh, this is the uh, official ad. Let's see, skip this. Oh, here it is. OK. This is. The dream of flying lives deep within us. Experiencing it is now possible for all. Awaken the dream and discover your new passion. It's a short ad, and it does get the point DJ across. The new generation DJI Goggles 2 instantly transport you to the sky. They're smaller, lighter, more comfortable, and diopter adjustable. Fully focused on immersive experience. Whether you're new to flying or already a seasoned pilot, the motion controller makes you feel one with your drone. Just plug and fly. Pull the trigger and bolt forward. Or turn a corner with the swivel of your wrist. Flying is as easy as point and go. DJI Avada brings high quality imagery to every flight. The integrated camera system features an upgraded sensor. Totally immerse yourself and your audience by using the ultra-wide field of view. 
capture cinematic footage in 4K resolution. Or freeze time with epic slow motion shots in up to 120 frames per second. Smooth and stable video, even as you swoop and dive, is now a reality with Rocksteady. And with Horizon Steady, you can lock your footage level for a cinematic feel. The low weight and small size of DJI Avada makes it perfect for hitting the tightest gaps. The built-in propeller guard allows you to be more daring with your maneuvers. Avada makes contact with an object. It bounces back and maintains its altitude, so you can keep on flying. At the tap of a button, you can instantly halt to a stop and hover in place. Then, set off again when you're ready. Should Avada fall on its back, activate turtle mode and watch it launch back into action. For additional safety, Avada features downward sensors and return to home keeping your drone safe on every flight. They've extended it to 12 recording uh, with DJI's with flagship O3 Plus video transmission quality. and snappy ultra low latency response times. With an outstanding 18 minutes of flight time and a transmission range of up to 10 kilometers, you can freely explore for longer and farther. Realize dreams. Evoke imagination and dare to fly with DJI Avada. Anyway, that's so that's the commercial. It, the reality is a little different, but I have to say that um, it made the the. Form factor really loaded. made me rethink this all of my prior drone experiences. Um, a, a traditional drone with exposed props, if you hit a tree or something, you're done. You're gonna, it's, you're gonna have to go retrieve it or you're gonna lose it pretty much every time. Oh, sorry, thanks. This is what we call a Cinewoop uh, form. And, uh, oh, let me switch, talk about the controllers. They, they ship with that uh, one that looks kind of like a, a joystick or a gun or something, and that's called the uh, motion controller. This is what it looks like. Um, it's really seductive the first time you fly because it has an accelerometer, and so you push the button to start the thing, and it'll automatically lift up. And depending on if you tilt forward or back and how much you pull the trigger, that's how you control it. You can change direction by rotating your hand this way and this way. Real easy, short learning curve, crappy control of, your <laughs> of, the, of the drone. And it's not that much fun because you're not gonna do anything creative or acrobatic at all with this. And you're sharply limited on your performance envelope. Um, if you fly what we call normal mode, um, then you're, you're limited to 16 miles an hour. Uh, sport mode, um, you can fly 30, I think it's 33 miles an hour. And there's a manual mode if you're using a proper control that can go almost 60 miles an hour. And that's quite brisk. Um, I wouldn't want to fly this anything besides normal mode or the really slow slow mode because you really don't have very certain control that is what FPV is all about. Um, this is what it ships with. So they, they want you to buy the, the proper control if you are at all going to be using it, in, in my view. Um, there's a lot of other features uh, with the full, the full featured remote. Um, this thing has a gimbal, which means you can, you can change the angle of the camera. It's only up and down, it's not side to side. But what that means is I can be flying up over my house and I could shoot a series of still pictures at quote 48 megapixel. I, I would say it's, the quality is decent but it's not a real 48 megapixel. <laughs> uh, it's still, you can make, a, it's good enough to make a decent piano out of. 
uh, you know, if you wanted to uh, shoot the skyline or the island or something like that. Um, you have just, you're learning all the skill sets you need to fly a traditional drone if you use the proper remote, whereas you don't. You'll never, this is only unique to their product and no one else uses anything like it and it will become pretty old, you know, fairly quickly. Yeah, so that's a great question. The the drone's about 650 bucks, give or take. And I again, I bought the whole package, planning to sell everything except for the goggles. Um, this is a couple hundred bucks. And uh, then you've got batteries, and which are not inexpensive at about 80 or 90 bucks each. And so you're about $1,500 if you buy a full package with proper number of batteries. Now, um, that's, a, that's not a small investment. You know, you can buy a, quote, tripod drone or camera drone, like, like a, D, a DJI uh, Mini 3 for, you know, probably, I th what I think, probably Costco, I think, had them for like 500 bucks or something. So if you just need to take pictures of your house or something, you know, or you're in, and your, your sole concern is the, the photo aspect of it, um, this is not the right tool. It's just, it's a, it's a significant amount of money. Um, the good news is there's an awful lot of people that manage to drive their Avadas into the drink or otherwise lose them anyway. So you could buy this thing, learn how to fly with it, and then sell all of this stuff for pretty much, pretty close to what you paid for it. And then you're left with a really good goggles and you can build a proper, a proper uh, drone that, it's is a blast to fly for about 400 bucks and you know maybe 600 if you want to get fancy you can also buy ready to fly drones that are already built pre-built that will work with those goggles so it's a uh, you know there's trade-offs this is giving you probably 50 hours worth of savings before you're up in the air flying between building one learning how to program it and learning how to fly a, a traditional first-person drone, you're going to have to invest it probably 50 to 100 hours of time to do learn those those skill sets, and it's it's frankly formidable for some people. You can register this thing in half an hour and be flying and getting incredible pictures and and footage and having a blast in a half an hour to an hour. That's a big difference. For a lot of people, their time is worth something, and this, for m an awful lot of people that aren't wanting to go, you know, race them or whatever, they just want to go explore that mountainside up there or go out <laughs> across the water or something else. And, you know, I'm assuming everyone in this, cr in this group understands being, don't be the, the annoying or illegal drone person, and don't fly over people, don't fly over you know, vessels and other stuff, then, you know, there's a lot of rules as far as registering them and so forth. So um, this talk is not about that, just to be clear. But this drone allows a person to be up in the air in an hour, give or take, and have a blast. And 60 miles an hour will terrify you for a while, I guarantee you, if you fly it in manual mode. It's, it takes a while to get comfortable at, at higher speeds, not to mention most people will kill five or six manual drones if by the time they can, or is this thing you has safety features on it. Yes? No, I'm suggesting you just go, you they only sell the drone with the with the controller, uh, I mean with the uh, motion controller, which is the left the left control. And that and that's what it comes with normally, unless you buy it just standalone. Um, and then this is a couple hundred bucks. So the, I guess the cheapest way would be to buy like a replacement Avada and buy this and buy the goggles. All you know, if if you if you wanted to, I don't see any point in the. Uh, you know, in the uh, motion controller for mo if you 
want to go anywhere in this hobby and if you want to properly fly the drone. It's just after the initial ease wears off, it, the limitations assert themselves right front and center and you'll really want one of these <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> so this is not even, it's not even fair. Not to mention you don't get anywhere close to the range with the little, this has a proper antenna. It's much more reliable and robust as far as the signal to the to the drone and back. So you have a you have a much safer and more reliable si uh, control. I don't see any benefit whatsoever uh, to flying with the, the left-handed control unless you just want the absolute minimum. I gotta go get some shots, because I'm selling my house, and I wanna shoot some pictures around my, my yard and everything else, and then I'm not gonna do this. No, it has n they're totally unrelated to each other. Yeah, the, this, is tr this is a tr traditional form factor, like when you get to a, a you know, a traditional first-person drone and you use a, the, the, the bigger, proper controls. They still have gimbals like this. You know, what the left side controls your throttle and, you know, your, your yaw. And the other one is, is allows you to tilt, you know, forward and, and back. The, all those things translate to when, to when you fly a, a more advanced, more, uh, you know, form f standard form factor drone. Um, this duplicates that substantially. The other thing is um, this type of form factor has taken the traditional uh, uh, first-person drone market by storm. It's a lot, a lot of people are familiar with, with uh, Xbox controllers and such like that, and so this will feel very familiar to anybody who's used one of those. Plus, it's a lot smaller than the, tr the traditional control. So um, anyway, yeah, I, I bought the drone without this, and I realized, oh, I can hardly, this thing, this is just no fun at all. I mean, I might as well just buy a regular camera drone and look at my phone for an image. It's not immersive, it's not, I, I'm not gonna feel comfortable flying it close to anything without, w w this doesn't give you a very precise control. That's, that's really the bottom line. So that's that's my verdict. Get the, get the get the controller too, and um, you know also, you know the the range is is not insignificant. Um, if you're flying around trees and forest and stuff like that, you have almost twice the range has been my experience with the controller two versus the motion controller. I mean, they just don't have much of an antenna in this thing. That's it's that's that's. Uh, the only thing I can tell you, it's, you know, it, it's great to give somebody, just to give them a five minute, you know, teaser of what first person flying is like, and then after that, it's, it's really of no use. Um, Either is fine. With, with the DJI drones, they have an auto landing feature. So you can initiate that and you can take the goggles off and it has LiDAR sensors that are actually sensing if there's anything underneath it and it will not land on, like if, if there's people or a car or even a big rock underneath where, you want, where it wants to land, it'll just stop and hover. You know, that's a great question. I don't know, actually. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes right in the drink. <laughs> uh, I, I, haven't tr I haven't tried. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely correct. I always fly with a spotter. And um, that's the that's that's the rules. Um, 
one thing that's nice about this drone is it, it will give you the ability to remain compliant with, because the state of the regulations is changing dramatically with Real ID, where basically all new drones in the future, it'll, I think later this year or the end of, uh, or beginning of next year, it'll, they'll finally, it'll finally be active, but basically, you're already compliant with this drone if you flash to the current f uh, firmware. It will broadcast your location and other information um, out there, which is what the, the next generation of rules are. Yeah, they have a broadcast mode, and you can also just plug a cable in and look at it with a, uh, anything that's US, like a USB tablet or monitor or that sort of thing. So you can have, you can have your uh, spotter seeing what you're seeing as well, which is, which is a nice feature. Uh, you, we were able to do that with the last goggles on the earlier DJI if, with this. Uh, somebody uh, wrote an open source solution for that, but it was kind of a little iffy sometimes. But it, it generally worked. Um, so, you know, I wanted to just show you, sorry, um, here's a, you know, what can be done with this thing. It's pretty interesting. I mean, the the... The video quality is, I think, pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, there it goes. Um, before I start this, I wanted to just touch on, um, they have some fancy features for stabilized footage and horizon lock and stuff like that. But in reality, if you care about your quality of your footage, you want to turn all of that off because you can export the raw footage into a couple of different uh, processing programs that'll take that telemetry and give you a much higher quality image than you could ever get with the in-camera uh, stabilization and stuff. It's it's as good as like a the earlier gen, like I'd say a, a GoPro nine black or or thereabouts, or even it's close to a ten. Some people argue. I I don't think so, but it's you can get very high quality stabilized footage um, that looks, that frankly looks pretty good. And this is an example of, you know, somebody who has a photography background and doing, pulling out all the stops. I just wanted to just show you a, a brief example. So this was all supposedly shot with this exact drone, this, uh, the Avada, yeah, with, with the in camera, not no additional cameras now. To I was able to verify they used the external software to, to stabilize it. It's not the in camera. Yeah, the spec is a well coded, well color coded, 4K 60. You know, as far as quality. Uh, no. You know, I was actually wondering about that. You know, at 60 miles an hour manually, you can get that sort of a, of a flyby experience. It's not set up. That's right about 60 miles an hour. That might be set up. So, 
again, you know, f with any camera, it's a tool. If you use it to the maximum of its ability, you can get shots like that. It's reality is it, you got to learn how to fly. You got to learn how to fly smoothly. You got to have your composition and other things. So I mean, I don't want to just to manage expectations, but I've gotten surprisingly good clips, and I'm going to see if I can. I shot something uh, this morning that was an uh, example of uh, how complete control you have with this little tiny craft with the goggles and first person view. I flew through the forest uh, next to my property underneath a table. And I'm, I was going through gaps that were no bigger than the drone without any problems at all. And uh, let's see if I can get that. Hopefully this will work. Is working good. Okay. So uh, again, this was just this morning. I was just playing around real quick, and this is actual footage. The sun had just come out, so it's kind of bright. I haven't touched the footage or anything. I just shot it, and this is what it actually was. I'm flying in what's called the sport mode, so you c I could go 30 miles an hour, which I might have went briefly once or twice on here, but I wasn't trying to fly fast. I was just kind of, just wanted to give you an, some, an example. Of mo the main thing that was amazing to me is I would be hesitant to fly through this forest area with my traditional drones, just because they're really, you're the only thing holding them in the air. Every second you gotta do micro adjustments and it's hard to fly, uh, frankly, st stable, you know, that way. But I'm going through this stuff and I can see every single twig and everything right there. It has LIDAR sensors on the bottom of it, underneath it. It has some limited collision avoidance, but direct head on is not with this particular craft. Some of the other DJIs have full 360-degree uh, collision avoidance. This just mainly with landing. Again, you know, this was kind of dark, and being able to fly through all this stuff pretty effortlessly is, I mean, you could, I could just as easily fly around the barn without hitting anybody and peek in the closet or wherever, anything that was open, anyway. So from a, uh, you know, there's practical applications if you had search and rescue or that sort of thing. You could cover ground that you wouldn't be easy to walk around in with this. Yeah, let's talk about, yeah, let's, let's talk about that. That's a bugaboo with these things. There's a tiny flap that you have to pop open with the prop at just the right angle in order to get access to it. And there's a micro SD card slot and also a, a USB-C port. But you can't get anything off of here without opening that. So you can either undo two screws, which, uh, or you can just, like most people, figure out after, you, after a while you figure out how to get it just the right angle and pop it open. But it's out of all the places they could put a port, it's, it's just mind boggling to me that they, they put it there. And it pa that passed through all the engineering reviews. <laughs> but uh, it is, I'll, you guys can come up and look at it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's, it's a real pain in the <laughs> backside. <laughs> it really is. Um, You know, um, 
I'm not sure that this particular drone does the, uh, has that capability currently. Um, I, I have no doubt it's possible uh, if DJI made it so. They've done it with some of the other crafts that they have. But this is really for a first-person flight experience. Um, I've talked to people that use drones commercially, these small drones for you know, all sorts of other footage, and they all say get a Mavic or a, a Mini 3 Pro, which have slightly better t and much better cameras and have some of those features like that, if that's what you're trying to achieve. Exactly. Yeah, this this has been around for I think about a decade now or more. It does not have a follow me mode. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think I wasn't aware that it did. I, I um, I've really used it as an intro tool for teaching people about the sport so they can learn how to f once they fly it just drop it just. You don't have anything to say for a while. It's pretty exciting for most people. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. You know, I don't, I actually am not sure it records any audio, to be honest. I, I never get any audio on my video clips, so I don't think so. Um, yeah, it's, you know, there's not a lot to the actual drone. It's, yeah, that's, speaking of prop noise, this is the loudest little drone I've ever flown. <laughs> uh, I'm going to actually, I'm going to start it up here and we can, and I'll just fly it a little bit here. It's, it's, a, this is a cine whoop. It's made to fly around people it has prop guards. It has sensors underneath here. Um, you can bump it into things, and nothing ha unlike a regular drone, which is, you know, these props would you wouldn't want to get hit with. It's, it's, and it's extremely controllable. I mean, if you just let go of the control, it'll sit there and hover, almost perfectly motionless, unless you tell it exactly what to do to go forward or any, or up or down or whatever. But it's loud, so not the most subtle thing to fly around. Uh, certainly do not want to fly this around people, uh, just from the irritation factor alone. Uh, it's great for, you know, if you're up in the mountains and you want to go see what's on that valley across the way, it's awesome. Um, or get some, you know, beautiful footage. Uh, you know, I usually, f I, I like to fly exclusively where the people are not. So I, I encourage everybody in the sport to do the same so we keep it, the, the keep the sport from being overly more onerously regulated than it is. <laughs> um, at this time, there is no official battery solutions besides this battery right here. DJI claims 18 minutes. Most people will tell you you're going to get an 8 to 11 minute flight time at anything besides hovering. And that's actually outstanding. Most, most humans are sensorily overloaded at about five minutes flying a drone. They just, you know, um, Dan here has built a couple of drones and he can t speak from his experience, I think. He would, he would say, agree with me. <laughs> it's a... Uh, Um, no, I would be interested in them. That would be awesome because they're so loud with the stock props. But um, the toroidal prop technology looks very promising for the whole sport. Um, this battery is going to give you about 10 minutes, 11 minutes of real flight time. And considering you can go, you know, 30 to 40 miles an hour with that sort of flight time, that's a lot of distance you can cover when you think about it. So um, it also has auto return to home if the battery gets what it calculates is a minimum distance. 
So it will just start w telling you to go back home, and if you don't, it'll just start flying home. And it'll land right exactly, it's very precise on where it'll land. It ha you, when, you, when you start it up, it has to, it gets a GPS lock, and it figures out where home is. And uh, it will just, you know, you, I found it to be very reliable as far as flying, you know, and coming back. You know, um, you can push the return to home uh, button if you want, and it'll just fly home if you don't want to deal with it. But I always fly. I like to have control at all times. I recommend that for anybody, just from a safety point of view. Um, I've never seen it advertised as such. I would not plan on flying this uh, in, in wet, any sort of weather conditions. There's a whole lot of tutorials on YouTube where you can take a traditional five or seven inch for FPV drone and you can waterproof it to the point where you can dunk it underwater and it will fly reliably. Uh, if it, so it's a different, different tool. This is really a very specialized tool for people that want to get the experience of FPV without going through the 50 or 100 hours or more that it's going to take to actually learn this hobby. And it also, you want pretty good footage uh, easily, you know, and uh, you want more of an experience than just looking at the small screen of a, of a, of a camera drone. Um, it was not designed to, but I will tell you, because of the popularity of this thing, and by any traditional uh, FPV pilot's experience, it's grossly underpowered. It won't feel underpowered to you for the first 100 or so hours you fly with it, but very quick, once you fly a regular drone, it, it's in grossly underpowered. Um, there, there's two companies coming that have kits where you can upgrade the motors, but because the flight controller and electronics are all proprietary, you're stuck within those windows. Fortunately, the, the DJI flight controller is really well tuned, and people have found that with, that with the upgraded motors, they lose flight time, but they're getting up to close to 100 miles an hour, like 90 miles an hour top speed. You can actually do tricks with it. Um, there's, you know, the, these uh, cine whoop, these cine um, form factors, they're really safe to fly because they've got the guards. And this is polycarbonate. I mean, you can hit things pretty hard with it. And, and uh, I managed to, f the first time I flew it manual mode, bounce it off the ceiling at full blast in my, in my shop. And uh, it didn't care. <laughs> I think a traditional drone would have been destroyed with the impact that it had. It's it's really it's really durable, and that's all great. But with the battery up on top and everything, it's top heavy. It's not really suited for doing major acrobatics. It's designed to go low and slow and get good pictures, and and you can and it goes fast enough that it's definitely going to get your blood going. Yes. Yeah, they have uh, frames available for a relatively low cost. If you somehow manage to crack this ring or something, the props are, are reasonable. Um, yeah. Uh, my biggest gripe is the battery. There's a, there's a guy on the internet that's making, converting the uh, traditional uh, lithium ion battery packs that, that people build to be able to work with the, with these things as they have with the the prior version of this which is the DJI first person drone which is a was that one make well, I would go 90 miles an hour but it was pretty unwieldy and had other issues um, this is a lot pol more polished package i mean people can just take this and fly in side of an hour after going around their yard for a little bit and get and and get most of the advantages of flying uh, you know, in this sport, especially if you use the, the proper controller. That's why it's so exciting. And then the, and the goggles are, it's a huge advantage. They use the new uh, 
the, the newer video compression. So even though the old goggles and the new goggles are both can do 50 megabits uh, per second as far as their bandwidth, um, when you have a much great, uh, more efficient compression scheme, the reality is you have absolutely perfect vision way out farther than you should ever fly. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's really nice to have that safety factor. Um, that would be a perfect candidate for a drone that you would, a traditional FPV drone that you would build and just put two cameras on. This is a kind of like a, a, a walled garden, like an Apple computer. It's, it's great. It works. Everything's, you know, ties together, but you're not going to do much modification to it. People on the internet are claiming 12 kilometers line of sight. Out. That's out. Not. <laughs> uh, the problem is you're risking battery. Uh, you won't. You may not get. You may not make it all the way home if you were to, to, to push that. I mean, I think, uh, you know, figure five or six kilometers, and then you've got rules anyway. You're supposed to fly line of sight for the so a spotter or somebody technically should be seeing this uh, according to the rules for what it's worth. Uh, DGI advertises 10 kilometers range. So. Um, at this point, uh, let's see here. You know, I, I was talking about the Cinewoop form factor. Um, in the beginning, I was kind of poo pooed, I poo pooed this when I just built regular traditional drones, but I've come to really appreciate it. Um, it's just so much safer having fully enclosed props. When you bump, if you clip a, a tree branch or something, you'll generally be deflected versus stop your prop and crash. Uh, that's a big advantage if you're flying in those, that type of an environment. Um, you know, the downside is the arrow, it's not, it's not as efficient and it tends to only want to fly this. You're not going to want to be flying this, doing a loop or something, which is pretty effortless with a traditional drone. Um, and, you know, the camera capabilities surprised me, frankly. I thought they're better than I thought, but it's not a, it's not a DJI Mavic or an Inspire, which is the industry standard for commercial uh, movies, motion pictures and such like that. Those are about, I think, about 18 or 20 grand for, for reference. So it's not fair. But um, some of the other limitations... Um, you know, as I said, it's, it's, not, it's not as good for pure photo capabilities as the Mini Pro or the Mavic. Um, you know, but for what it does, I think it's outstanding, frankly. It really is, especially if you capture the raw footage and then you dump it into a program, that the, the, the program that they recommend for stabilizing it. Um, you know, it's not, it's not that fast. I mean, it's per, most five-inch drones can, could fly over 100 miles an hour or, or thereabouts right off the shelf. This flies 60 for a very short time. Probably don't want to be doing that anyway, but, you know, where it matters is, let's say you're coming down on a hill or something and there's a tree branch or something that all of a sudden you see at the last minute being able to instantaneously pop up and over it and having enough thrust to do that is nice. This thing, you better plan it because it's, it's going to drift a little bit and then go back up. So you're, you really are, you notice the power limitations once you fly a real drone. But it, on the other hand, it's, it's, a lot of, it's still a lot of fun. You just, you just learn to fly that way. Um, you know, the, the price is really hard for people to get around it, but when you deconstruct it and you realize that, okay, if I'm still flying this thing in six months, you probably went and bought a five inch or seven inch, uh, you know, ready to fly first person drone or maybe even built one. And, and there's a lot of advantages to that, which I've covered in my other classes. The uh, 
so you keep the goggles. You sell the drone for five hundred bucks, five fifty. You sell the 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 everyone wants the the set the proper remote that you can't get half the time, so you can get nearly what you paid for it. So you're getting you know roughly half of that almost back if you sell it on eBay pretty easily. And you got the goggles, and you go buy a drone that for five hundred bucks. So twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars all in. Uh, you know whether you bought it, just bought the goggles, and crashed a couple of drones, or then you can add that price, add that price to it. This gives you a way to learn how to fly, have fun, and then upgrade if you feel like that you want to. And I think for the price, that's good. Oh, this thing has a great simulator, by the way. That's an important thing to, to cover. Um, there's better simulators out there for traditional drones, but they're, the DJI drone simulator is great. They also have a, a fancy uh, fly safe app that has geofencing capabilities, can tell you when there's aircraft or anything's nearby, and a bunch of other safety features, which are nice, especially if you're anywhere near civilization. I generally try not to fly where there's people, so. Um, but if you, if I lived in Southern California, for instance, that would be a really useful feature. You know, um, Kitsap's relatively sparse, but if I was in, in King County, I would definitely want it. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of parts you're not supposed to fly in there. Yeah, there, there's, there's I think th three different. There's the Zero the HD, the Orca, and the DJI goggles um, that are all digital. I would never want to buy an analog goggle anymore. The, the the difference in the technology is just too great. Um, to, to me, this this is the best goggle I've ever used, and I've tried most of them. It's 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 just outstanding. It really is. Um, the only thing that's as good as this is the old DJI goggles, the V2, if you hack them. Uh, there's, they became open source. People figured out how to enable all of the features that the analog goggles had. So now you get full flight telemetry. You can get better, improved distance and quality of your image and, and a bunch of other nice features that DJI just didn't seem fit to give to us. And now that, that exists with the older goggles, and you can get them for about 400 bucks or thereabouts these days. No, that, it's the app. It's just, it's just the software app on your phone that's getting an internet connection to cellular. It's not that advanced, unfortunately. So. Yeah, I mean, you still got to stick to the hard deck. Don't fly over 400 feet, uh, you know, above the ground and other, and don't fly near planes or places. All those rules, all, as always, apply. And I found 98% of people in the, in the hobby are very, very scrupulous about trying to make sure we're, we're doing things safely. And, uh, and as always, encourage, don't be that irritating drone person, for, for gosh sakes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to just show you how easy this thing is to take off. I'm not even. If anybody wants to try looking through the goggles, I can. You can take turns. I, I'm just going to basically lift it off the ground and rotate it. Uh, you know, but it's pretty easy to to do. Basic takeoff is similar. You hold both props down after you turn on the control, and it'll take off. But for this, once it beeps like that, then you can just double click it. And you click it again.
So why do I need to annoy you?
Scottsdale, and we had, we had a blast flying.